Hello and welcome to Daily Politics on Trust TV. On this program, we discuss issues around politics, policy, and governance. I'm Hamza Idris. As the electorate in Edo State set to exercise their democratic franchise in the governorship election scheduled to hold on the 21st of this month, exactly eight days from now, there have been growing concerns over electoral violence despite the signing of peace accord by the 16 out of the 17 political parties taking part in the process. The ruling People's Democratic Party, PDP in the state, has declined to sign the peace accord, citing arrest and detention of its members by the police as political party campaigns gain momentum ahead of the Saturday poll. About 4,682,086 registered voters will head to the polls that is 4,119 4, polling units in 192 wards spread across 18 local government areas of Edo State to, stay, uh, to, to decide the fate of the 16 male governorship candidates and a lone female contesting for the number one seat of the oil producing state. Just again, this backdrop, we'll be engaging with the former director of voter education and publicity of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and now, communication specialist and consultant, Nick Dazan, and then the deputy national youth leader of the People's Democratic Party in Edo State, uh, Timothy Osadolo, uh, who joins us virtually from Edo, while Dazan joins us here in Abuja to look at all the pros and cons ahead of the election. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Welcome to the program. Good evening. Yes, I Good evening, man. Thank Nigeria. you for having me. Edo. Good evening, Nigerians that are listening to us. All right. As it is with the tradition of this program, on Fridays we will open the conversation to accommodate the contributions of our teaming viewers to comment on our social and political development uh, within the week. And this week we'll be focusing on the reported flood disaster in Maiduguri and the fallout of the petrol uh, pump price hike in the country. But before the conversation, here are some tidbits. The Nigerian military said it has eliminated Habibu Sububu, a notorious terrorist in the Northwest. Sububu has been perpetrating his violent activities in Zampara State, where he met his Waterloo yesterday. A reliable defense intelligence source on Friday morning confirmed the daredevil criminals killing by troops. According to the source, the bandits Kimpin, Alilu Sububu, and several others were neutralized in an aggressive clearance operation by military troops in Zampara last night. The source also noted that troops recovered deadly firearms and ammunition together with motorcycles from the terrorists. And elsewhere, the federal government has explained the cause of the Maidu Group Road disaster, stressing that no damn drop initially speculated. According to the government, the recent devastating by the group flood was caused by the overflow of the Nganda River and not collapse of the Alau Dam. The Minister of Water Resources and Sanitation, Engineer Joseph Usep, made the clarification at the briefing in Abuja on Friday. According to the minister, the Alau Dam located in Maiduguri Borno State remained intact. The minister said they do not envisage that the water levels this year will be of this magnitude, adding that as a result of climate change, the damper was in excess and the rivers could not actually contain the water. I will now take a short break. When we return, the conversation commences. Don't go away. All right, welcome back. The youth leader from Edo, let me start with you. Of course, you have heard our uh, tidbits. The first is on the devastating flood in Borno State. So I, I want you to extend your sympathies to the people. And then where you think government got it wrong in terms of managing some of these climate change issues? Yes, hello. Are you with me? Is that Timothy? 
Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Mr. Timothy, can you unmute your volume? I mean, can you unmute your... Yes. I can hear you. I can hear you. That's a few. I can hear you. All right. Welcome to the program. So what was the question you asked? Yes. I said you had our tidbit. The, 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 the first one, of course, about the... Yes, the our tidbit. What did you ask, sir? Are you with me? Hello? It's like we're having... Question you ask, sir? Yes, welcome to the program, Mr. Timothy. Thank you. Yes, Thank I you. have some tidbits. Uh, the first one was um, on the issue of killing of a notorious um, bandit or terrorist who has killed a number of people, especially in the Northwest, in the name of uh, Sububu, uh, according to military sources. Yes, what do you think about this exploit by, by the military, of course, at this time? I think uh, we should think we should focus more on the bigger things than uh, on the little things. Oh. If in tw if today September uh, 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 what's it called in September uh, we are still, uh, September 2024, we are still talking about a military killing a kingpin in the northwest. It's shameful and disgraceful as a nation as a people because these are not things. Though uh, I don't support terrorists and I don't uh, uh, share their ideologies. But I believe Nigerians are bedeviled with the bigger issues now more than ever before. I also believe that these are not issues for the military. If we are well equipped and functional police uh, services uh, and agencies, these are their duties. Internal security is not the is not the uh, is not in the in the, in the mandate of the military. So it's a failure of the, the internal security system and organizations that warrants the military to step in. So let's look at the root causes of most of these issues. There's hunger in the land. There's joblessness and hopelessness in the land. And because and a combination of all of these factors have made the uh, insecurity to thrive and become a very lucrative business, which, which it ought not to be. The truth is this. Uh, we we focus more on the things that don't matter to us as a people. Yes. You know, these governments that uh, we are having today run on, on the mantra of uh, uh, hope. But I don't know if we are thinking about hope or hopelessness now for Nigerians and uh, Nigeria as a country. The right. subsidy that we have had was removed. Mm. We have seen that uh, it's been paid not only through the back door, but in excess of billions of uh, dollars. Yeah. So the truth is this. We as Nigerians, we should focus more on the issues. One which is most is to bring our government to account. Right. Two is to ask the right questions. Three is to demand for things that we should we truly deserve as a nation and as a people. Nigeria, Brazil, and uh, China, we are once on the same scale. Today, we are like uh, not just a, a shadow. But we are like it not as a shadow in the current call. scheme of things yeah. where these nations are being called. Right. So that are the issues I want us to focus more on. There's the other issue of bandits. Bandits, uh, they became bandits because there was a lacuna in the security architecture of the country, because they were jobless, and because perhaps they, they were hopeless. And right. as a last resort, they went to banditry. Though that is not the right step to, they should have taken, I don't encourage it, but I would also celebrate a soldier man killing a bandit at this time in time, when my people can barely feed, uh, when there is no hope for graduates that are graduating from the over 40 federal and the state universities across the country. All right, thank you very much. And quickly, on the other one, the devastating flood in Borno State, which has killed many people and displaced over one million. Where, where are we getting it wrong? Because we have had... Um, you know, warnings from NIMET and even from international organizations that uh, uh, we are going to have floods this year. And here we are now, millions of people displaced. Yes. The truth is this. I, my heart goes out to all the families that have lost loved ones. And my prayer goes out to all those who died from the... From, uh, the unconscious and irresponsible planning of our governments. Because NIMET had made these predictions, not just this year alone, but since last year. And this facility, the dam that has burst, I'm sure should have engineers that should have known the threshold limit of these dams, what it can take and what it cannot take. And this 
dams have flows, flow channels through which conveniently and systematically they could have uh, reduced the pressure on the dam so it doesn't burst and overflow into a becoming flood that a disaster that has become. So why did they will blame nature for uh, excessive rain uh, dam war? We will also blame our government for not being proactive in the taking care of basic things. No, they, uh, uh, there are nations that have nuclear reactors and they check upon it. Not about the water dam that that eyes can see, the and uh, engineers can man. So it's unfortunate that those needless lives were lost, properties were destroyed, and uh, this is that starts been falling upon us. It's not enough to say God knows best. God actually knows best. It is God that has given, but I'm not sure it's God that has taken us, that has taken his souls this time. It is irresponsible governance that has brought us to where we are to have lost this number of souls. And my heart goes out to all the families that have lost loved ones in this uh, unfortunate and unavoidable disaster. Um, of course, Timothy will allow you to speak more on this much later in the course of the program. But now over the main topic of the day, the back and forth in Edo State. Now, as the deputy national youth leader of the People's Democratic Party, are you worried that the chairman of your party in your state, Antony Azebemi, and the governorship candidate, of course, Asu Egadolo, boycotted the signing of the peace accord, even though they were there? Well, the decision, the decision to boycott was not that of the chairman or that of the candidates. It was that of the leadership of the PDP, which they both represent. And uh, I'm part of that decision, and I will not share away from it. All PDP members are part of that decision, we will not share away from it. Because it's if we do not boycott that uh, uh, peace mandate, that uh, peace accord ceremony, People would not have known what the issues are. It is because the PDP boycotted. People are now asking questions as to why would PDP boycott. Meanwhile, we have over we have over nineteen written petitions to the IGP of police the, over these uh, issues of uh, uh, incessant and uh, 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 on us. Uh, uh, this is such arrest of PDP members. The truth is this. PDP has suffered arrest of its of our members in the hands of the IGP. The CP we have petitioned on 19 occasions to state what the issues are, and there was no one single response. Now the work the the, the, the IG was saying that uh, the arrest was connected to uh, the killing of a police officer uh, that died on July 17th in Edo at the airport. The truth is this, the IGP knows better than what he's saying, and I'm convinced he also knows what he's doing. But All right. Yes, Timothy. Yes, viewers, we now also have uh, Mr. Nick Dazang, a former director of voter education of the Independent National Electoral Commission. Mr. Dazang, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. We are lucky to have you. I can see the, 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 the connectivity very bad, uh, but we thank you for joining. Uh, on the other end um, is uh, Timothy Osado. He is the Deputy National Youth Leader of the People's Democratic Party. He joins us via Zoom from uh, Benin City. And the question I asked him was, why did the chairman of the party in their state, and uh, of course their gubernatorial candidate, boycotted the signing of the um, peace accord. And he said they have written more than 19 petitions to the IGP and there was no response to any of those petitions. The question I have for you, Mr. Dazang, as uh, somebody who is really uh, familiar with uh, the workings of electoral processes, how important is signing of peace accord? And what is the implication of the PDP in Edo not signing it? Um, I think um, right from the 2015 general elections, the National Peace Committee uh, had intervened and mediated in our elections, and they have prevailed on contestants to commit to peaceful conduct 
during elections and to prevail also on their followers to refrain from anything that will visit violence to our elections. And the National Peace Committee has been very successful and uh, it has impacted considerably and tremendously on our elections since that time. In fact, it was on account of their interventions in 2014, 2015, and in some of the elections in the South-South, particularly rivers, where the Commission had challenges, and subsequently in 2016, uh, during the off-cycle governorship elections in Edo, and in uh, 2020 also, uh, during the, the off-cycle governorship election in Ondo and then Ondo states. Uh, these uh, inputs were very, very impactful in the sense that, but for their intervention, and the intervention of the Oba of Benin in 2020, probably the off-cycle governorship election in Edo state would not have been conducted. Hmm. And the intervention of the NPC, uh, led by General Abdul Salam Abu Bakr and the Oba of Benin, set the tone for peaceful conduct and superlative elections subsequently in Ondo, uh, Ekiti Oshun in 2022, uh, before the conduct of the 2023 general elections. So the, 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 the intervention of the National Peace Committee is crucial. It's, it's not uh, based on compulsion, but it's based on suasion. You use moral suasion to prevail on gladiators and candidates to commit uh, to peaceful conduct and to prevail on their followers also to follow suit. So it is regrettable that in this case, and in Edo State particularly, where the, uh, the National Peace Committee has done tremendous work in the past, a political party has refrained or abstained from signing uh, the, the, the accord. And I think that the, 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 the party uh, put forward cogent reasons, mm. one of which is that uh, senior members of its own party were arrested without any explanation by the security agencies shortly before the conduct of these elections. And you see, the elections are conducted based on certain principles. Mm. One of which is that there must be a level playing field for all contestants. Or those who are, you know, facilitating the conduct of the elections, particularly the election management body, which is the Independent National Electoral Commission, mm -hmm. must show neutrality and impartiality and transparency in the conduct of the elections. And those who are securing the environment for the conduct of the elections, such as the security agencies, must also comport and carry themselves in similarly neutral, impartial, uh, you know, uh, ways to now give assurance to contestants and candidates that there is a level playing field for everyone. So, in spite of the assurances of the IGP on Wednesday during the stakeholders forum, yes. that the security agencies, particularly the police, uh, which are the or which is the lead agency for the conduct of elections uh, has committed itself to neutrality uh, in the conduct of the elections. The arrest, this arrest, and at, at this time, does not, to me, suggest this neutrality. If you are arresting people who carried themselves wrongly in the past. And in July, that is how many months ago, you would have done that immediately after that. But it took you like two months to not effect this arrest. And at a time, you know, when the elections are about to be conducted, it sends the wrong signal. Mr. N Mr. Dazang, uh, if, if my memory did not, uh, you know, failed me, uh, it's like the IGP says that they are not responsible for the arrest of those people. That the, the, I, that the police are not responsible for the arrest? Yes, I think, if I'm not wrong, because I read it in quite a number of places where the IGP was quoted to have said that um, police is not aware of the arrest of anybody. Well, 
I, I, I don't speak for any of the political parties. I'm just a neutral uh, yes. observer and commentator, uh, you know, and I always want to comment on the process. Exactly. Uh, but uh, I'm happy that the police said they did not arrest anyone. Well, in, in other words, um, what he also said was uh, there are people fomenting trouble, so he isn't even sure whether they are APC members, PDP members, or any other political party. Well, what is key, what is important and crucial to the process is that the election management body and the, the security agencies must comport themselves professionally. They must be neutral, they must be uh, impartial. And I, I recall very well that when I was a director uh, at the commission during the conduct of the 2016 and 2020 uh, off-cycle governorship elections in Edo State, the police to a very large extent, particularly in 2020, carried themselves professionally. They were right. neutral, they did their job, they did not take sides, and at the end of the day, we had a very, very credible and excellent election. And right. that set the tone for the conduct of the Ondo election, which followed a few weeks after. And you can see that the Ondo you know, election is following immediately on the heels of the conduct of the Edo governorship election. So the, 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 the precedent for conducting uh, a spallative election in Ondo is based on the conduct of a stellar election in Edo state. And don't forget that these states are contiguous. They have certain tendencies that are, that are similar. They have uh, uh, local governments uh, that are on sea or they are marine. And, 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 and they have uh, difficult and challenge, challenging terrains, and they also have diverse ethnic, uh, ethnic uh, nationalities. So uh, they have certain peculiarities that are, are similar, and, and they have the share borders, they are contiguous, and the election in Edo is likely to impact either positively or negatively on that of Ondo, depending on how this election is conducted on Saturday. 21st September All right. 2020. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, Timothy, now back to you. Uh, of course, you have had Mr. Nick Dazang, a former director of voter education at INEC. But um, right. looking at the utterances of the actors, especially PDP, what the governor is saying, the chairman, some of you, the members, you are sounding as if you are suffering from maybe defeat fever. I'm sorry to use this word, but why are you <laughs> pessimistic about the process? You are laughing. Yes, how about you? Hi. <laughs> Sule, my brother Sule back. It's Hamza, yes, of course. In Edo, there's only one, there's one candidate and, and, and others. And that candidate is that of the PDP, Dr. Aswe Igudalu. A first class administrator by excellence and a corporate uh, a, a, a personality who has made his name in several businesses across the country and internationally. Well, why Today, are you, why are you before to now, uh, Timothy, looking at the utterances of the governorship candidate, even Obaseki, who is about to hand over, the way they are talking is as if they, they are crying foul of sort. Let me tell you, let me tell you why, uh, when you say uh, these issues, there are more issues that are, that are not being said. The IGP, the IGP of police or uh, the IGP of the APC government, I don't know who he chooses to be at uh, the contest, we want to address him. As we speak today in Edo, in today's Edo, the, uh, the police helicopter that belongs to the federal government and the, uh, uh, the general police force, is the police helicopter that takes Adam Shomole from one central district to the other? Is parked and stationed in the do. And thank God will open the line later How, so that somebody can to the, comment on To this. the best of my knowledge, Commander Adam Shomole was a tailor and a unionist who became a union president, and God was smiled upon him, he became a governor. He never attended one police school, he had no police background. I has no police uh, uh, yes, affiliation. Deadly, How the helicopter, police helicopter has not become his private helicopter with which he flies around the, the central district of Edo is something the IGP can only tell us or the PRO of the Potential Police Force can explain to the world. Allegedly. Now they have boasted severally. 
they only play when they go on campaigns. Instead of speaking to issues and telling the dope people what they will do differently or what they will do better, they will tell them federal might is coming. Uh, we have mm -hmm. seen arrests on the eve of the elections. We are hearing they are showing police uniforms for their talks. We are seeing that Dr. Shomole, who never attended police school, either primary or secondary, now flying police helicopters across the states. Allegedly. What do you want us to think? That yes. the police is not uh, 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 in yes. collusion with them? Please but let me tell you, it is the will of the people against the will of them. IGP, Egbotoku, and the CPC candidates. Don't and those people anyone. have never in the history of their lives been defeated, and this election will start not to be defeated. And the people have resolutely said they are voting for PDP, and PDP will triumph come reward me. Okay. Do you have assurance that you will participate in the election? You have boycotted the peace process. Will you participate in the election? The peace protest, uh, Salil, the peace protest is an act of conversion. It's not a constitutional issue. It's not, it's, not, it's not a product of law of this country. It's an act of conversion. As, as gentlemen will say, let's go up and uh, 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 sign a... a, a an agreement to say we won't do this, we won't do that. But who is to oversee the accord to see nobody breaks it? It's not the police. We are saying to the chairman, with all due respect, Abdul Salim Abubakar is a senior elder statement in this country. Martin right. Lutagua is a senior elder statement in this country. Father Kuka is a senior elder statement in this country. With all due respect to them and their, and their achievement in life, all right. we want them to use their good office. All right. The exalted office they hold in society right. and to shape public opinion to ask the IGP to please at least be IGP of all Nigerians and Thank stay you. neutral. Thank it should you. not be an IGP we'll who's an extension yes, of the We'll be back shortly. Viewers, don't go away. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back. If you are just joining, this is Daily Politics on Trust TV. Do well to follow the conversation across our social platforms on Facebook. Instagram and watch us live on YouTube. We have joining us virtually from Abuja, Mr. Nick Dazan, a former director of voter education of the Independent National Electoral Commission, who is also a communication specialist and consultant. We also have Timothy Osadolo, a deputy national youth leader of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, who joins us from Benin City Live. Yes, Mr. Dazan. Looking at the figures, um, INEC said 4,682,086 registered voters will head to the 4,519 polling units in 192 words spread across 18 local government areas of Edo State. Where can we place the issue of voter apathy, fear of intimidation, and then lastly, you know, the militarization of election in Nigeria? Well, you have raised so many issues uh, at one go. Yes. Uh, but um, <laughs> let me take the issue of uh, the last issue uh, first, which is uh, the issue of the, the alleged or so called militarization of our uh, elections. Yes. Uh, let me say without any fear of contradiction, uh, that there is a correlation between massive deployment of security agents and the conduct of peaceful elections in our crime. And that goes back to more than 10 years ago, uh, when, you know, violence began to visit the conduct of elections. And people tended to keep away because they, they, they feared for their lives uh, if they came out to vote. But subsequently, what we saw was that the massive uh, deployment of security agents tended to give people the assurance to come out. And also, this massive deployment uh, protected their, their properties. You know, you know, you leave your house, go to the polling unit to vote. So in addition to securing the police units, the security agents also secure uh, the, the, the your houses. So normally in the context of election, we have what you call three concentric rings or three uh, corridors. So we have the police units that are secured by police and other security agencies who are unarmed. Then we have the safe remove or distance at the world level uh, security agents who may be armed. 
uh, who may be policemen and non policemen. And then we have at the borders, you know, like we are now conducting elections in Edo State. Yes. And there are states bordering uh, Edo. And occasionally we have people infiltrating states where obstacle conduct elections are being conducted with talks and, you know, uh, other undesirables. So it is the duty of the security agencies to also stop such persons from infiltrating. So that is what we call the outer security cordon. So uh, normally when we conduct elections, uh, off-cycle or off-season elections, this deployment is massive because, you know, the security agents are not thinly spread as in the conduct of general elections. Yes. Where you have more than 140-something uh, thousand polling units across the country. Mm -hmm. Now we have just about you know, uh, around 5,000 police units in Edo State yes. and, and about 4 million uh, uh, voters, registered voters. Yes. So uh, there is a correlation between massive deployment and peaceful conduct of elections mm. in the sense that the, the presence of the security agencies, instead of frightening voters, assures them of their safety and they come and vote peacefully. Some of them wait for the outcome of the conduct of the elections, so they depart. So uh, that is that. Now, uh, you mentioned voter apathy. Yes. Uh, actually, so many factors impinge or engender or bring about voter apathy. And I hope you will summarize them in maybe a minute. Yes, Mr. Daza. Yes. Yes, one of which is that consistently over time since 1999, there has been a failure of the delivery of good governance okay. by, 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 by successive governments. Okay. So that has made people to be discouraged Apathetic, about the yeah. democratic project. Mm. And there are other things too. A lot of people still feel their votes do not count. Yes. Uh, and, and that has to do also with elections that were not very credible. Mm. Oh, where the election management body itself does not respect some of its own guidelines, which it has exposed and advertised. All right. So that discourages people. All right. Yes, uh, Mr. Dazan, we have to let you go here at this point because of time. And we thank you very much for contributing to the program. And we hope you will oblige us when we call you next time. Thank you for coming thank to the program. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. All right. Now, viewers, you have the opportunity to contribute to the three issues we discussed, most notably the Edo election, what do you think should be done to get it right, and then the killing of um, Sububu in the Northwest, and then the flood in Borno State that dislodged uh, over a million people. And you can do this by calling the telephone number that will be displayed on your screen but try to be very very brief go straight to the point and don't use foul language now timothy uh, you have heard um, mr nick dazang now how prepared do you think the youths in edo are in participating in the election and uh, do you think the pdp has done a lot to deserve their votes again well, uh, I will speak for the past eight years. The governance under Godwin Obaseki has been 80% pro youth. This is a government that has made half of its school youth. I'm not sure there's, there's uh, up to two or three persons in the state air school that is, uh, has, has got to the age of 60 or even 57, 58. It's all youth in the state of assembly. We have, I'm not sure the oldest person there is even up to 58. Now, the local government chairman they are in their 30s and their 40s, he has made a cautious effort to carry the youth along and build them in leadership for tomorrow. Now, the youth of Edo have benefited from his policies that are targeted at youth development and enhancement and training. Now, the small scale and medium enterprises in Edo, their, their loans and the agri uh, loans that the government gave out 
was all to stimulate the youth into becoming more productive and all and uh, uh, useful to themselves, to the state's economy, and to the country at large. So the Edo youth, or an average Edo youth, thinks and believes that Obaseki and the PDP government that he leads has done enough for them to warrant their trust and their votes and continuity of the goodies that it affords the youth. Uh, more so, the Edo youth is very versatile. Are very intelligent because of this intelligence they know what is right and they know what is wrong there is there are, there are more than five public uh, federal tertiary institutions in edu and they have uh, in, in, in in every 10 edu youths six are graduates so there's the level of education is high and they know what to expect from governments and they know which person or which government meet their needs and serve their purposes. So for me, the Edo youths are no more than willing to support this party and they are already supporting this party by themselves. Yes, give, give me a, a minute or, or two to uh, receive a call from one of our viewers. Hello? Hello, good evening. Yes, good evening. Welcome to the program. Who am I on to? My name is Tony, calling from Benue State. Okay, from Benue. Welcome to the program. On which of the issues I, uh, do you want to comment? I want to comment on uh, a day election. Okay, a day election. What is your take? And I want to make a personal appeal to Nigeria security. All right. For this, for this force and the civil defense that we worked at little bit. Okay. And also to IMEC. My brother, in Nigeria, there is two things in Nigeria that is no cheap, that is no cheap for you to read your lecture. Mm. Number one is the Bay State. Second is Anambra State. These two states, for you to go there and read election, is like going to, to Red Sea to go and fish uh, 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 there. And they are appealing to them to do the right thing. You see, sometimes when there is problem in election, is when the security personnel, and then I like want to compromise in some certain things. I'm appealing to them, give them a level playing ground. You see, a day election will come peacefully and then peacefully. All right. The way trying to compromise is when problems come in. And these two states, as I'm talking to you, for you, for, for anybody to go and read a election, as they're doing in other states, is it possible in these two states? All right. Good man. Thank you very much for your contribution. Yes, Timothy, back to you now. Eight years ago, it was um, Adams of Shomole who was raising the hands of Obaseki, saying he's the best man for the state. Now, we are living witnesses. They are now the greatest of enemies. Are you not worried? that history will repeat itself by the time um, the governorship candidate Yugadolo takes over the mantle of leadership in Edo? Well, I believe, and, I'm, and uh, the facts are there, when you do your eight years as a governor and you are contented and you go home, and you, have, you don't have a, a, a due of appearing influence on who has succeeded you, the chances of conflict or confrontation is near zero. The former governor of Edo State or the parallel similar governor of Edo State, uh, no, the former governor of Edo State, essentially Lucky Bilidio, had no conflict whatsoever with Adam Sushomole or uh, Osaim Osomo, governors that preceded him because he learned how to mind his business. He learned to know that when the country dropped on his administration. Osomole thought and believed in his heart, wrongfully do, that a man like Gordon Obaseki, who has sat on boards and, sits and seen it all, will become a puppet or a stooge that he can hoodwink and press his button anyhow it suits his emotions. Obaseki is too dumb to be his own man, and that was when the, the issues, or that is when the gloves started uh, getting pulled off. The truth is this. I don't foresee a scenario where God, God Nobaseki and his uh, uh, successor, Aswe Gudalu, will have a, such a, a difficult moment like the one between 
go to a master's degree and show you see that he's going to a university course or he's going to one university to go and lecture or he go back to his business. Okay. Once again, I will crave your indulgence to pick another caller. Hello. Welcome to the program. Hello. Yeah, good evening. How are you doing? Well, yes, we are fine here and we hope you are also fine. On what of the issues uh, do you want to comment? All right, uh, my name is Ibrahim. I'm calling from Debbie State. Uh, okay, I want to comment on the issue of election. Okay. I'm going to be brief, honestly. Okay, yes. Uh, we know the, the issue of election, most especially, comes to the, the people that are in power, that are, you know, I mean, the party that is, I mean, has produced the president that is leading the country, most at times, mm. we can see the way and the manner they conduct and they operate concerning election and and uh, trying to, like, you know, be, uh, reclaim one of the states that is not belongs to the same party. Uh, as of for Edo, there are so many things in Edo. Firstly, uh, Adam Sosomoli, we know that uh, he has been, uh, you know, a label uh, leader. leader and uh, eventually he become the governor and now he lost the state on that platform of the APC that installed him as the governor. Mm. So now, and we learned that uh, based on what Abdullah Higandu just said, because I could recall, he said they are going to try all the cool to reclaim back Edo State because Edo is an APC state. And so I think he, he said it uh, as, a, as a politician, yes, not using maybe violence or anything like that. So, so what I'm trying to say in this is that uh, they should they should be fair. They should be fair. All and right. Then involving the security personnel, involving the security personnel by showing power and then intimidating people, the voters, is unconstitutional. And okay. the INEX as authority. Because the INEX are now controlled by the federal government officials. So okay. because they have to be god fearing enough to conduct free and fair elections. All right. Because you could agree with me that when the, 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 I mean, the president or the, 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 the government officials All right. are in power and not having the interest of a particular, then they will use the party, they will use the INEX, okay. they will use all the security personnel. All right. Uh, but we hope they will get it right, Ibrahim. Yes, thank you very much for your contribution. Now, Timothy, I have less than one minute for you to actually uh, make your final comments ahead of the election. Eight minutes. So you have less than one minute to call on the contenders, the voters, and the security agencies on what to do. What about you? Yes, hello. Unfortunately, we also lost uh, connectivity with um, Timothy Osadolo, who is the Deputy National Youth Leader of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. Uh, he joins us via Zoom from Edo State. Earlier in the program was Nick Dazang, a former Director of Voter Education of Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, who is also a communication specialist and consultant. Of course, we've received calls from two people, including Ibrahim, who was the last viewers? We hope you enjoyed the program and you found it engaging and informative. And that's a wrap on today's package. Join us next week for more interesting programs from here. Bye bye for now. I'm Hamza Idris.